So what I'm going to show you guys how to do is get the uh, the Penny Labyrinth drawn in SolidWorks, and I'm going to show you um, the steps you need to start with, and that's dimensioning what your uh, Penny Labyrinth is going to be dimensioning where everything goes. Now we drew it on graph paper, so this is decently easy. It won't be too difficult. Uh, but we do need to figure out where these lines are at so that you can draw it in SOLIDWORKS. Obviously overall it's um, overall it's four inches. Okay, so when we draw this in SOLIDWORKS we'll start out with a four inch uh, square and um, and our walls, of course, are uh, a minimum of a half inch. So, for example, this right here, this end of the path is a half inch. It's a half inch from the outside. But I also need to know some other things too, such as how far from the outside is this opening. So, if I just count over one, two, three, four, five, six, and six quarters of an inch is uh, one and a half. Okay, so I know that opening starts one and a half inches from the left. And I know my openings or my paths are all one inch. So I know that's going to be one inch right there. And as long as I know where this boundary of the path is located I don't need to figure out how far the boundary of this path is to the outside here that would just be over to find okay you don't need to know that and uh, then the next thing you know we'll figure out okay so we got a quarter inch here all right and then um, we again our our walkways are one inch or our pathways are one inch and then um, so that pathway is all fully defined this guy right here let's figure out where he's at so um, from here to the outside of the coin labyrinth it's one two three four five so that's a 1.25 and we know our pathways again are one inch Okay, now we got to figure out how high up this goes. So from the outside here to this wall of my boundary is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's an inch and a half up, and again, of course, one inch for the width of our boundaries. This right here, that's two blocks, so that's going to be a half inch. And that should fully define that layer. And then over here, um, we, I would just do the same thing. Okay. Now when you get to SolidWorks, the first thing we're going to do, and you guys should write this stuff down, is uh, extrude a 4 inch by 4 inch square. And you want to extrude it... Um, one sixteenth of an inch. Okay, so I'm just going to write one sixteen by four by four. Okay, and that's going to give us the base. It's going to give us a flat surface then and we'll build up the rest of our walls from there. So then the next thing that we'll do is we'll extrude and this extrude is going to be a tenth of an inch, so point one and we're going to extrude point one the uh, boundaries to the outside of the coin labyrinth okay and so we're actually this shaded in area is what we'll be pulling up from the part 
and we won't be pulling up the boundary or the pathway we won't be pulling up the pathway we'll be pulling up everything outside of the pathway from our sixteenth of an inch base and then we'll do the one level and then on the other level we'll do the same thing we'll do an extrude a sixteenth of an inch four by four but depending on how you drew it if you drew this one laid out um, how they would be stacked on top of each other some of you guys may have drawn them as if they were a book and you were opening it like this this one here it's more like this I drew this one so they're stacked on top of each other I think a lot of you guys drew yours so it opens like a book if you do yours open like a book then you'll extrude this area on the front but if you drew yours so that they stack then you'll draw what you drew on the back side so I'll show you both ways so that you know what you need to do depending on how you did it so I'm just going to open up a new part document and of course we want to make sure we're ANSI and IPS and I'm just going to extrude boss base front plane and I'm just going to grab the center rectangle tool smart dimension and just watch you don't need to follow along or I mean you don't need to do this along with me because you'll get lost and I'll post a video of this to YouTube so if you guys want to rewatch it you can okay so there's my sixteenth of an inch by four by four base okay now I'm going to draw the uh, I'm going to draw the boundaries of the pathways I'm also going to um, then redraw the uh, boundaries of the coin labyrinth itself so I'll start with drawing the uh, pathways so I'm just going to do an extrude boss base I'm going to select the front face and maybe I'll see if I, I'll have this open so we can see both of this both these at the same time Okay, so uh, I'll go ahead and I'll just rough draw out the sketch of it. You don't have to worry about the dimensions. Just make sure that lines that are supposed to be horizontal are horizontal and lines that are not supposed to be horizontal are vertical or diagonal or however you drew yours. Also make sure that you don't accidentally snap to any geometric relations like the midpoint. When I drew this line, I almost snapped to the midpoint, so I just shifted slightly to one side or the other so I didn't accidentally snap to the midpoint because that will cause trouble when you go to define it because you have that midpoint geometric relation in there and you don't want that. So uh, I'll go ahead and draw the other path. Okay, and we can see I have all my horizontal and vertical relations are there. They're in where they need to be. And then I'll go ahead and I'll start uh, drawing the outside boundary of my coin labyrinth. And I'm just going to draw lines on top of the existing rectangle. So those are automatically fully defined just because I snapped them from corner to corner. But it's important that you don't draw over your entries or your exits. Okay, you need to make sure those openings are left open. So I didn't draw a line right here. Then I'm just going to go in. I'm going to start smart dimensioning. Okay, so now that pathway is fully defined, and then I'll go ahead and do the same thing for this one here. And these lines, you can either set them to be collinear, or you can just put in another one inch dimension. And 
da, 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 this is quarter inch. Okay, so there, now my pathways are fully defined. Uh, my next step then is to click the purple arrow and you'll see that the paths are not highlighted but the, I guess the area that gets filled in is highlighted and we're gonna extrude that up 0.1 and then now when you look at it, there's my path. All right, so then I'll save this one. I'll go file, save as and uh, Save this in my CAD folder. Make sure you guys save it in your CAD folder. I don't think I have a coin labyrinth folder yet, so I'll make a coin labyrinth folder. And I'll just save it in here as... Uh, side one and uh, so when we guys let's let's put our first last names first and that way when we 3d print them it'll be easier to see on the pen drive because not a whole lot of uh, um, you know a lot of a lot of these drawings are going to get saved on that pen drive so it'll be easier to figure out which ones are ours okay so that's uh, side one of my coin labyrinth now for my second one what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I will start another part, extrude boss base, front plane. Again, smart dimension four by four. Sixteenth of an inch thickness. And extrude boss base on the front plane. And then again, I'm gonna draw my paths Now this time I'm going to put in some uh, collinear relations just to avoid having to put so many dimensions on. So this line right here is going to be collinear to this line. So I'm going to click one line, hold shift, click the other line, set them to collinear. And uh, these guys, they'll be collinear. And these guys are collinear, which means that they all lie on the same line. And then uh, I'll go through and I'll also put in the boundary of the coin labyrinth, which will fully define itself. All right, and then it's just a matter of smart dimensioning this again. I'm going to need to count these because I don't know. I didn't dimension this part. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's an inch and a half. And that goes in one, two, three. Screen's too small. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, and if you're not good with converting quarters into decimals you can actually you can just put in five backslash four and it'll do the math for you okay so um, this then um, is good to go except for the part where I forgot to um, I forgot to draw it on the back side because I drew mine on top of each other like the way I have them laid out on my graph paper one stacks on top of the other. I think a lot of you guys drew them like a book so that they open up like that. So you would draw, if you drew yours like a book, you would draw it on the front. Um, if you drew yours like I did, how they stack, then um, then you'll need to draw it on the back plane. And if you accidentally drew it on this face, that's not a problem, it's a real simple fix. You just expand the boss extrude two, right click on the sketch two, edit sketch plane, and then just flip it around to the back side, change the sketch plane and now it's on the back side. 
all right um, and I just have to change my extrude direction so it goes the other way so there we go all right so now it's good all right and then uh, um, so that's uh, that's what that should look like uh, if you uh, drew yours overlapping or uh, stacking if you drew yours on the as a book it would be on the front face of that for your second part now there is one more thing that we're going to do and this is so that it makes it easier for us to figure out which way this uh, goes together once we have our two pieces. And what I'm going to do on this one, on, uh, on this back face here, is I'm going to do a uh, extrude cut. And... Uh, And I'm just going to extrude cut a triangle here. I, I could also do this as a chamfer if I wanted to. It might be easier to just to do it as a chamfer. But uh, I'm going to do a chamfer. I'm going to get this corner. I'm going to chamfer it. I'm going to chamfer it to uh, a quarter inch. Okay, I'm going to cut off that corner. And then I'm going to fill it the opposite corner. A quarter inch. Okay, now the reason why I did that is so that in the other drawing, what I'll do over here is I will chamfer the same quarter, or I'm sorry, the same corner and uh, fill it the same corner. So I did my chamfer on the top. This time it's going to be on this corner up here. And this time, this one's going to be here. We'll go ahead and we'll fill it that quarter inch. Okay. Now, I haven't shown you guys how to do assemblies yet, but I'll show you what this looks like when I assemble it. So to make an assembly, I'm going to go up here to File, Make Assembly from Part. And I'm going to insert one or the other. It doesn't matter which one you put in first. And then I'm going to go to insert components. I'm going to insert the other one. Okay. And then I'm going to mate them. So this surface to this surface. And now you can see that those two surfaces are lined up. And I'm going to approve that mate by hitting the green check mark. I'm going to line up this surface and this surface and now you can see that they're lined up at the top and I'm going to mate this surface and this surface so you have to mate on three different surfaces all right so that's how they'll go together and I can do an exploded view and pull them apart so you guys can see how that goes together so that we can make sure that they are lined up the way that they need to be. All right. Uh, one other thing I didn't show you was how to do the uh, the holes in the middle. These uh, the holes for um, you being able to see where your coin is at, and that's pretty simple too. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do an extrude cut. I'm going to select the inside surface of the path, and I'm going to go to Offset Entities. And I'm just going to select each one of these lines. And you can only do one path at a time. You need to make sure that this yellow line is on the inside. And you can switch that by clicking the reverse button. And we're going to set our offset distance to uh, 3 8 You don't want it too big. Otherwise, your uh, coin might fall through. And then we're just going to offset the other path as well. and reverse that so it's to the inside purple arrow and then uh, extrude cut that through all and that's how you put in your slits so that you can see where your coin is at and again I'm gonna go to uh, offset uh, extrude cut select the path offset
reverse, three eighths. Purple arrow, through all, there we go. Cool? Alright, so that's that's that. Alright, so what I want you guys to do first is go ahead and dimension your penny labyrinth or your coin labyrinths on the uh, graph paper. Once you've done that, then you guys can go ahead and get started drawing them in SolidWorks as long as I've seen both of your guys' designs. Alright, anybody got any questions? Alright.